I'm here in Kinderhook, New York to look at the poetic paintings of artist Donna Moylan. Follow me. As a kid growing up in Boston in a big family, the fact that I had this facility for drawing meant naturally being in art classes. It's not exactly put on me, but it was inevitable. And I got so used to it over time that is when I was about even 11 or 12, I was asking for lessons at the museum, at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So I was always in there. But I didn't have a sense of what was the deep impetus to make art. And therefore, at a certain point, I left school and went to Rome, where I stayed for 23 years. What I really wanted to do was find out why I would be making art and what possibly I could contribute. All the time I was there, I was studying art, you know, from all the different periods that you can find in Rome, which is basically from prehistory to contemporary art. Um, and I had very good teachers, people to guide me through all that. So gradually, I think I was kind of growing up, obviously I was, I was growing up, and uh, reading and studying and um, understanding more what I could do. When I came back to the States in the early 90s, I was having shows and I had already begun to have shows in Rome. I always thought I'd be an abstract artist, but I'm, I'm still not an abstract artist. It's figurative, and someone recently told me it's poetic, and that's what I like. I like to think it's poetic, that there's sort of a moment that captures a thought or an awareness, a situation of um, an idea striking you. Um, I employ lots of iconography from different periods and different cultures. When I started, it was much more conceptual. I had this idea that um, a painting could be kind of a diagram. So the different parts of the painting would be telling what the painting was about. Like, I might have a picture of a castle in the center of a huge painting, and stripes of color all around that were the same colors that I used to paint the castle. This one that's here, a huge piece that shows the um, an interior of the of a castle in Caserta, Italy, and it shows all these stairways going in different directions. And I put these bands of, of red color in front, so it looks almost like, and it's in black and white, it's only in black and white, except for these red bands of color. So I like that it looks, it's so interior, with all these areas going in and out and up and down, although it's not like Oscar painting or a drawing, it's, it's, very, it's very specific. It reminds me of looking into a body, like a mouth or something. Um, and I like that. I like that painting. More these days, I'm creating little narratives in the painting. Partially, this year of the pandemic has been useful for being here in the, in the studio for long you know, for long periods of time. I mean, every day I'm in here five or six hours. So I use the pandemic as a theme. Um, some of the pieces are kind of humorous. I made little viruses in all different shapes, you know, popping all over the landscape. Or paintings of like these pods that we were living in that are connected. You can see the little rooms inside or houses scattered over mountain ranges. Um, because it's such a huge deal, <laughs> this pandemic. The fact of wearing a mask is fascinating to me anyway. You know, there's so much more to us than what we're showing at the moment. You know, that aspect of then hiding your face literally and then taking it off, at least for me, it has a lot, it's very interesting. You know, the stunning fact that we're having this pandemic kind of stopped us in our tracks. The whole winter's gone by, really, you know? And yet, it's all so long. It's very strange.
When COVID is over, it'll be, it'll be great. I think there's going to be so much gladness. People will just be sparked up and galvanized and, you know, all this creativity will be, you know, exchanged and discussed and enjoyed. I really think it'll be a big boost. Don't you?